never seen this time period in American history on film. 20 years before, Lewis and Clark has crossed the country with nobody else. It was an uncharted territory. This Northwest Territory was inhabited by indigenous people, the French and the English. It wasn't really America yet. Very little laws and rules. It became a place of great interest to her in the fur trapping trade. Ultimately, it was a source of massive income, kind of like the pre-gold rush in a lot of ways. Tell me you got some kind of plan. We have a group of us, the fur trappers. It's just crazy hodgepodge of people from all over the place. I've been out here so long, I'm actually starting to miss my wife's cooking. I'm actually starting to miss your wife. You shut the hell up. We had a conversation, all of the cast and Alejandro. The theme of the film is survival and spiritual growth through physical pain. He said, you're going to be in pain, and that's planned, and that he wanted to film that then. <laughs> it's one of the many things that Alejandro put in place for us, it meant for a, a real, more kind of immersive experience. We were all immersed in the wilderness. It was all around us. <laughs> Everything has to pop as being real, because if you have a false moment, everything falls apart. The group has to move from being in control to being at the mercy of everything. You forget your place, boy. You're there. As far as I can tell, my place is right here on the smart end of this rifle. You move along, Fitzgerald. The fur trapper's life, it's mankind's first imprint on land in the Americas. It's a powerful theme. I had the six right. months working my ass off like a mule, right. risking my neck, men dying for what? Most of these trappers were runaways, were young people. Normally, they own more at the end of their journey than what they were paid. I was hired to trap them. I went hired to go You signed a contract to protect your boss and your boss's property. These were incredibly tough, resilient men out in the middle of the elements like any other animal in the wilderness. You're scaling a mountain at minus 20 degree weather. From an actor's perspective, there's nothing better to actually do that. A lot of these locations were incredibly difficult to get to. I mean, we had a pretty massive crew that had to logistically move from location to locations through this really harsh winter landscape pretty difficult for everyone to pull off. Most of these locations are very pristine. You know, there's something very pure and very spiritual in these places. Like these fur trappers, we had to adapt to our surroundings, reacting to what nature gave us. I ain't afraid to die anymore. I've done it already. Part of this film from design point was the locations. The safe thing to do is track a new course back up on land. The arc of glass through this really harsh winter landscape was pretty difficult for everyone to pull off. Not only the time period, but the weaponry of that time period. Survival techniques, what these fur trappers were like, the, the idea of the mountain man. Then what are we going to do? Sit out there like a bunch of goddamn ducks? I'm talking to you. We sort of developed the idea that this film was a journey, so we were looking for a progression of landscapes that would change so you knew they were moving around. I ain't afraid to die anymore. Every location, in a way, has to be pointing to the right sun direction to shoot with the right light at the, at the right hour. It's very difficult to shoot nature, and when you start going out there to, to see the distance between the locations one to another and the reality of getting them in the right time, uh, you don't rule in nature. You are part of the nature. This is the most difficult movie I've ever done. It was very challenging. You know, we're constantly battling the weather and nature. This church we ended up doing is using all the colors of the landscape. We built a 1820s boat that would have been built out of rough lumber. We put a cabin on it that they could store their possessions in there, which were furs, and it held about 20 men. I, I love building sets so that they are shootable from 360. We built a complete fort, and I think you can walk around anywhere in it and not see any sign of construction. He wanted the movie to feel very naturalistic. 
He knows how far I came to find him. It was incredibly challenging, but I think worth it a lot. He's full of richness and knowledge. There's a humbleness in Jack that is just delicious presence to, to be with. Chivo Lubeski, friend, brother, partner, teacher. He did just an amazing job. This film was shot in a very particular way, and he's capturing every nuance of beauty and poetry that the landscapes has to give us. To create these tones is very complicated because you're working in nature and not all the time you can control what you have in front of you. I knew it would take that type of a cinematographer to make this complex story come to life. It's one man's journey, but at the same time, he goes through an entire lifetime of emotions. We use extensive rehearsal period where Alejandro gets to create almost like a ballet between the camera and the actors and the environment. We realize that very wide lenses allow us to really engage the audience in the movie in a very visceral way. We were able to have close-ups of Leo and still have all the environment present. My head was that boy, and he took him from me. These shots aren't all about bringing an epic quality to the film, but it's about creating an intimacy with the actors within an epic landscape. Chivo is, is, is a master of light, and he creates a relentless experience, but at the same time, he's very submersive. And that gives power of the image. You want to be able to immerse yourself in an entirely different world, and they've really accomplished that goal in this movie that really takes your breath away. makeup on this film just for Leo's character was epic. He last my character has been given the job to take this fur trapping unit through the wilderness. My place is right here on the smart end of this rifle. Leonardo DiCaprio. The bird on him made the shape for the man from that time. The makeup in this movie is the most incredible makeup I've seen probably in my life. The naturalism of her work is spectacular. I turn around and get mauled in one of the most incredible cinematic experiences I think audiences will ever have by a full-grown grizzly bear mother. Bear attack was particularly challenging. Bear attacks his arm, so he had an appliance for his arm and also his hand, and his leg gets dislocated. The whole of Leo's body was covered with prosthetics. It took us four and a half hours to apply. There were four of us working on him almost continuously for that time. Where hair and makeup has been done, all of that has been around the reality just pouring off the screen because all that matters is what they get on camera. The makeup is so important because you have to show all the stages of recovery. You could see the journey in his face. It's pretty spectacular. I never worked with Alejandro, but I know he was going to want to explore this in a different way than it had been ever shot or dealt with before. I think Jackie is amazing. She nailed every detail. Every bit of the wardrobe was done from etchings and stories and folklore about who these men were and how they survived. The trappers dressed out of what they could acquire. The shirt was long, it was tucked under the crotch, and then the pants were made out of a Western pattern with a fall front, almost like an American sailor pant. 
The very poetic thing that was always Alejandro's idea was that Leo would wear the bear skin that's left behind in the trapper camp when they abandoned him. This bear fur ironically becomes his main source of warmth, but also becomes a symbol of this death that happens then actually gives him life. <laughs> He tried to make distinct tribes by changing the designs of the war shirts or the painting motifs on the war blankets. The Pawnee tribes in this film have more cotton and prints and wools because they were closer to the trading posts. And as you get to the Plains Indians, they're much more in leather. Jack is like a poet of wardrobe where she can create all these characters using textures and color. We've probably dressed 500 background people and all of our actors. Every time that I see the film and I see the details in the wardrobe, I'm stunned. Everything was used right in the spot. We had a deal, Glenn. There was no deal. This film, it has all the elements in the tradition of Jack London. It's beautifully savage, horrendously poetic, and intimate and epic at the same time. Revenant was a screenplay that was an interesting prospect for me because we really feel immersed in this epic journey of survival. I co-wrote with Mark Smith the vision of these men to be a bigger vision of life. Revenant achieved the physicality of these brutal things that happened to him in a big scale, but at the same time get to the spiritual nature of Hugh Glass. It's Glass dealing with the pain, using the pain to survive. This emotional pain is really what keeps him going. He's afraid. He knows how far I came for him. I think more than anything, what Alejandro wanted to do was create poetry in that story, what it means to have all the chips stacked against you and this triumph of the human spirit. For me, the most important thing was the love of a father and a son, and that's the heart of the film. survivor and he's part of American folklore. This man is the only reason we're still alive. And he knew the American Northwest Territory more than anyone. This was unknown territory full of animals, full of richness. Only safe thing to do is track a new course back up on land. He is given the job to take this fur trapping unit through the wilderness. Along the way, he is mauled by a grizzly bear. The proper thing to do would be finish him off quick. He is left to die by his hunting crew, so he goes into ultimate survival mode. He's absolutely broken emotionally and physically. He crawled through the entire American wilderness on his own through the dead of winter. No weapons, no means to really survive, except this bear fur, which ironically becomes a symbol of this death and gives him life. It's an adventure of survival. Resilience, endurance, revenge. He's afraid. He knows how far I came to find him. On that journey, it becomes a spiritual endeavor in a lot of ways for Hugh Glass. What really make somebody survive under so much pain? Is there love under so much pain? Is there beauty under so much greed? What is after revenge?
really understood not only the time period, but the weaponry of that time period. Survival techniques, what these fur trappers were like. I'm trying to tell you we're gonna lose these pelts. You'd rather hold on to the pelts of your life. Life? What life are you talking about? I ain't got no life. I just got living. The only way I get to do that is through these pelts. The boot camp that we did was vital just for us to get a sense of what kind of skills these guys would have. These muskets would take a minute to reload at the very, very least. There's a lot of horse riding, hatchet throwing, the basics of survival in the wild. I really work hard to be very faithful to honey communities, Arikara communities, that everything was right. As an audience member, you want to be able to immerse yourself in an entirely different world. Alejandro really accomplished that goal. The complexity of this project was overwhelming. That's the magic of art and cinema that allows us to go places that we will never be able to do. So I'm happy to bring that in this film. There's a lot of things to say about Alejandro. Truly, the man is a genius when it comes to filmmaking. He's uncompromising, but I love it. You want to work with the best, and he's the best. There's very few filmmakers out there that I believe can accomplish films like this on an epic scale. He's really developed his own style to making movies. The landscapes became a huge part of what the submersion of the audience will be. So I knew that I need very special landscapes, very remote, on touch, that doesn't look like you have seen in other films. That's why his films are so unique. Alejandro is a creative, passionate artist. You really feel like you're out in the elements with these characters. You really feel immersed in their lives. These locations will be basically characters that will embrace the character and will transform him, or will protect him, or will threaten him. Alejandro creates these moods with very little dialogue in a very cinematographic way, like no other director. What Alejandro wanted to do was create poetry in that story, to have very little chance at survival and the triumph of the human spirit. I ain't afraid to die anymore. I've done it already. The safe thing to do is track a new course back up on land. Oh, well, I've reached the trip. Better flunk back down there, they can get eyes on us. They got eyes on you right now, son. Without the spirit the actors gave and the conditions that we went through, this film would have been impossible. We have windows of one hour and a half to shoot very complex scenes with hundreds of extras. So it was like a theater play, and all the actors embraced that technique. <sighs> Leo is one of those actors that you can understand everything from his eyes, because there's a very few words that he delivers, he has to make you feel very many complex emotions simultaneously with his body language and only with his eyes. The way he did that, it was for me as a director an incredible first time experience in my life. It's palpable, the, the tension and the intensity that he brings to it. We all see it, I see it a lot of applause now, so I ought to be God. Tom Hardy, I've been an incredible fan of his work. I think that he is one of the most dynamic actors out there and his commitment to creating character is is incredibly exciting to watch. I think this is some of the most brilliant work he's ever done. Nobody move, just stay where you are. Dom Hal Gleason, a fantastic actor, perfect for the role. What's you doing down by the creek all by yourself? Will Poulter is such a rigorous actor. He's very serious, he's very intense. I feel pretty privileged to have seen Will's transformation over the course of the film. All the actors were extremely powerful, and I couldn't be more happy to witness the really the miracle of art and transformation is about. Get 
this film, it has all the elements in the tradition of Jack London. It's beautifully savage, horrendously poetic, and epic at the same time. Alejandro wanted the movie to be incredibly immersive, to be plunged into the world of glass. You to be cared for as long as necessary. I understand. Hugh Glass is part of American folklore, but he was a real person, and these things really did happen. Do it! Help! There's different levels of the film. The surface, you can see a story of survival. Behind the surface is what it was before that, which was he has lost his family. The movie is an affirmation of life. You can see the struggle for survival in every shot. It's one man's journey, but at the same time, he goes through an entire lifetime of emotions. My head was that boy, and he took him from me. Revenant achieved the physicality of these brutal things that happened to him. Big scale, but at the same time, get to the spiritual nature of Hugh Glass. These shots are about creating an intimacy with the actors within an epic landscape. All these geographies is important because it's telling you a lot about the characters, not only the external journey, but about the internal journey of the characters. He's afraid. He knows how far I came to find him. But I think more than anything, what Alejandro wanted to do was create poetry in that story, what it means to have all the chips stacked against you and this triumph of the human spirit. For me, the most important thing was the love of a father and a son. And that's the heart of the film. It's almost like another sense is awakened. You're fully immersed in this movie that really takes your breath away.